Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to go over chapter 5. In this chapter you're going to learn how to measure distances and angles between objects, how to measure the radius of an arc and also you will get familiar with some other commands like move, copy, rotate, mirror and array. And you will also learn how to create round, beveled or sharp corners. Now let's start with two commands that give you some information about the objects that you have in your drawing. And those two commands are measure and list. If you come here in the home tab and utility panel, you see we have a measure button, right? So measure command allows you to measure the distance between points, the radius of an arc or a circle, or the angle between two lines and the area, actually the area of an object. So you see this button is kind of um, splitted. We call this kind of button a fly out button, okay? So it, write it down, a fly out button. So if I click on this arrow below this button, you can see the other options that I have. So the default mode for me is quick, quick command. The other options that I have are distance, radius, angle, area, and the volume that we're not going to use actually. So if I click and select the distance, then the default button for me will change to the distance. And if I come here and just select this button, the distance will be selected. But if I change it to radius, next time I'm going to use this button, it's going to be the radius. Okay. Now let's start with the distance command, okay? So the shortcut to distance command is DI, and this is the button. So D, you can either hit DI or D, in, actually insert DI or DIST, okay? So DI enter. Let's first draw some objects here. Okay, now di enter, and then uh, make sure while you are using this command, make sure that OSNAP is uh, on, okay? So you can easily pick the points that you want. So I'm gonna pick the end, this end point to this one. And here above the uh, command line, you can see this information over here. So distance equals nine feet, 15 16 inch, inches. Now this time let's use the button. Okay, so this the button is set to distance. I'm gonna pick it and then I'm gonna check the distance of this angle line. So you see that we have the distance and angle which is 45, right? And you see I'm not out of the command yet. So it asked me to kind of prompts me to mm, select an option or to pick another kind of measurement or actually to continue find distances. Okay. So you see when I move my cursor over this rectangle, I'm not able to pick a point. You need to hit enter again. And now, and now you are able to pick another point and check another distance. Now to get out of the command, you can hit just escape key and that's it. Now you see the information about the distance is showing up on the, just above the command line. Now, what if we want to see these, uh, these information just on the screen we are working on, okay, on this black screen. So for that, you need to turn a switch on, okay, in the status bar, we have a switch called dynamic input. And if if it's not showing up here, actually, you uh, you need to turn it on yourself, okay? So this button over here is a customized customization button or customization switch, okay? So 
let's see what we have in here. So the, all the options we have here in the status bar are showing up here. Now you have the option to make them on, to turn them on and off. Now the one that we are looking for is this one. Okay, so dynamic input. Just check it and it will be on. So the button is located here. You can see that the dynamic input. Okay. So, and it is right now it is off. Now let's turn it on and see what happens. Now D I enter. And I'm going to measure this line. You see, I'm able to see the uh, measurements while I'm drawing. And also when I click, I'm, a, I'm able to see the information, um, just it was attached to my cursor. One more time, D I enter. And you can see the information. But if you use the button this time, again, a distance button and come here and pick this. Now you can see all the information here. Okay. The uh, length of the line, delta X, delta Y, and the distance over here, the distance value. Now let's hit escape. In this course, what you are going to use is uh, just the keys of keyboards for this command. Okay, so D I in, sorry, D I enter, and then pick the first point, the second point, and then if you don't move your cursor, this information will be up over there. Okay, so you see attached to my cursor in the gray box, I can see the distance, the angle, the delta X value, delta uh, Y, and this kind of information. But as soon as I move my cursor, this will dis and these will disappear. Now I want to talk about the angle value over here. Okay, so the angle of this line. So for the measurement for the angle measurement, actually it does make a difference which point I'm picking first. So D I enter. If I pick this point first and then pick this second point, you see the angle is 45 because actually the angle is between this line and this uh, positive X axis. Okay. So it's 45 right now. So the angle is between this line and this line and it's 45, but let's hit the I enter. If I pick this point first and then this one second, you see the angle is 225 and that's because this point that I picked first is going to be the center of the X and Y axis and the angle is from here to here. So it's 100 plus 45, which is 225, right? So it does matter which point you pick first for the angle measurement. And don't forget that the angles are measured in counterclockwise, counterclockwise direction in AutoCAD. Now let's move on to the radius measure. So I'm going to draw a circle and an arc over here. And now if I want to um, actually know what is the radius and diameter of this arc and the circle, I need to come here and this time pick the radius um, one. Okay. So you just need to pick the object and then you can see the radius and diameter over here. This time the circle, again, you have the information about the radius and diameter. Now, again, you can find the information here in the screen, in the info box, and also over here, just above the um, command line. Now the next measure tool that I'm going to talk about is the angle tool. Okay. So again, the measure button 
this time choose the angle one okay before that let's draw two lines so we can specify the angle between those Now come here and pick angle tool. Now you need to here, you need to uh, specify the first line and then the second line. And now it shows you the angle between these two lines. Now, what if I want to know what is the angle over here? So let's hit escape and click the icon again. So this time you see the default one is the angle. So pick that and you see we have an option here which is a specify vertex, vertex which is active and if you hit enter one more time then you get to that option which is a specify angle vertex. So again use the in this angle tool and then hit enter and now you need to first specify the intersection of these two lines okay it's important you need to pick the intersection first and then one of the vertex and the other one and now we have the um, angle for this um, angle this time so you had two options in this command okay uh, first to pick the lines or if you want another angle measurements, uh, for example, this one, this bigger one, you can use the specify vertex option. So the angle tool can give us either the angle between two lines or the angle between arc endpoints. So if I pick this tool and come here and click on the arc, then it shows me the angle between these two endpoints of these of this arc. Another command that gives us some information about the objects that we have in AutoCAD is list command. Okay, and you can find the icon over here in the properties panel. If you expand the expand it, you can find the icon over here. Okay, or you can easily just type in list, enter, and then you see that it's saying select object. So I'm gonna pick the line and this arc, for example, and then hit enter. Now you see in this box over the um, command line, I can see the information about this line and arc objects. So it is saying the object is located in layer zero. Uh, I can see the coordinates of X and Y axis of the end points of the line. I can see the length, angle and everything. Delta X and Delta Y. And you can minimize and expand command line from by using this arrow over here. The next command we are going to talk about is fillet. And it is going to be one of the commands that you are going to use the most, okay? So we use the fillet command to create round or sharp corners. Actually, the fillet command uh, can be used to connect two objects, for example, two lines with an arc. And the great part is that you can specify the radius of that arc. Well, besides using the fillet command to create round corners, we can use it to create sharp corners. And I'm going to show you how. Well, the good part is um, if you use fillet to create sharp corners, you won't be needing to use, you won't be needing to use trim or extend command to create clean corners. Okay, now let's clean up the screen over here. I'm going to draw some lines.
Okay, so the icon for the fillet command is located over here in the modify panel. And the shortcut to this command is F. So F enter. And you see we, ha we have some options over here. Undo polyline, radius, trim, and multiple. So I'm going to talk about uh, some of those. So let's first pick these two lines. Okay, so I'm going to click here and click here. And you see what happened? So these two lines were kind of extended. So and to the point they could touch each other. Okay. So now why is the corner sharp? Okay. So let's hit F enter again. And this time I'm going to see the radius. What is the amount, the value of radius? So I need to hit R enter. You see the R is blue, highlighted in blue. So R enter. And now I can specify the fillet radius. And you see that by default it sets to, it is set to zero, right? So that is why this corner is sharp because the radius of the circle over here of the arc over here is zero. So we have a sharp corner. But if you want to have a kind of an arc shaped corner, you need to specify a radius. For example, I'm going to enter um, two inches maybe. And then I'm going to pick this and this. And you see we have a round corner this time. So um, that depends on this round corner kind of depends on the radius of this um, of the arc that you specify in fillet command. Okay, so F enter R enter and then you can specify the radius. Now, sometimes you might have two lines crossing over each other and, uh, but you want to have a corner over here. Okay. So instead of trimming, you can use trimming these two parts. You can use the fillet command, right? So off F enter R enter. I'm going to, um, specify the radius zero because I want to have a sharp corner zero and then pick these two um, points and that's it. Now, next time when I'm going to use, let me show you next time that I'm going to use this command, I don't need to specify if I want to have a sharp corner, I don't need to again, enter a radius value. So F enter R enter. I'm saying that it's zero. Okay. So hit enter and then just continue with the command. So when I hit it, R enter, I just wanted to make sure, for example, uh, the radius is zero. Now let's hit control Z or undo. Now, what if I want these two lines to be connected, but I don't want uh, these two parts to be trimmed? Okay, so let's hit F enter. You see we have an option, uh, a trim option over here. Let's first check the radius. R enter, it's two inches. I'm gonna go with it. So hit enter. And then I'm gonna check the trim option. Okay, so hit T, enter. And you see we have two options over here, he, over here, trim or no trim. So if I don't want the lines to be trimmed, you can pick this one. Okay. No trim. And then I'm going to connect or fillet these two lines and you see, you still can see the rest of the lines, but it's, I don't know. We usually use the trim option. Okay. Because we don't want to see the rest of the lines. So F enter T enter and the trim. Okay. You don't need to actually specify that each time it, it is set to by default, it is set to trim. Okay. In fillet command, the order of the lines you select does not matter. Okay. So whether you pick this line first and this line, 
next. Actually, it does not make it any difference. Let me show you. So I'm going to pick this first and then this one. And you see the result is actually the same when I pick this one first and then this one second. Okay. But the part which is important is the location of the point you pick on the line. So let me show you something. Okay, so let's hit F enter. So if I pick this, so you see we have two overlapping lines. Okay, two kind of crossing lines. So I'm going to pick first, I'm going to pick here and here. And you see if I pick these two points on these two lines, I'll have a round corner on this side. But let's go to fillet uh, command again. But it if I pick these two points, I have another corner on this side. If I pick these two, it's going to be different. And if I pick these two, it's again a different corner. Now, let me show you something else. So I'm going to create two circles over here. And I'm going to connect these two circles using the fillet command, okay? F enter and I'm going to pick this point and this point and you see these two are connected with this arc, right? But as you see, the fillet and extend commands are not going to work um, with the circles in fillet command. Let's make them just closer. And this time if I pick this point and this point, they are going to be connected like this. Now let's see where you can use the fillet, fillet command. Okay. So in your drawings and your, in your floor plans, wherever you have a corner, uh, fillet command can comes in handy. Okay. So imagine that you have this corner as a corner of a room in your floor plan. Okay. And then you will be needing, in order to create the walls, you will be needing to create offsets of these two lines. So I'm going to offset them on the outside. So for example, five inch, five inch is a lot right now. So I'll enter maybe one inch. Okay. Now that I've created the offset, you see there's a gap between these two. And now I need to um, use the fillet command. So F enter. And because I want a sharp corner, R enter. And I need to set the R to zero. And then just connect these two. Okay. And if I want to re repeat these commands with other corners, you just need to when you hit F enter, we have a multiple option over here. So if you have multiple corners and you want to fillet them just right after each other, uh, you just need to pick this multiple option. So M enter and then after filleting, uh, after doing the fillet over here, you need to do the fillet and pick two other points and create another fillet. Now let's do a quick exercise. I want you to draw these two lines. And now I want you to kind of do a fillet and create an arc between these two lines and connect them. And I want the radius to be one inch. So pause the video and do it. Okay, I'm going to do it here quickly. So F enter, R enter, and then one inch. And that's it. So you see here, the radius was two inch here. The radius is one inch. And as you make it smaller and smaller, it 
gives you kind of sharper corners. The next command that I'm going to talk about is chamfer command. So if you want to have an angled corner or uh, beveled edges, you can use the chamfer command. And the icon is located the same in the same place that fillet, fillet icon is located. So it's again, you see it's a fly out button, just um, open it and this one is chamfer. Okay, and the shortcut to this command is CHA. Um, okay, so when you select the icon or hit CHA enter, then you can see these options over here. We have undo, polyline, distance, angle, trim, multiple, and method. Now, let me show you what it does, actually. Let's hit escape. I'm going to draw some lines. CHA enter and I'm going to pick these two. Okay, again we have a sharp corner and that's again some, something similar to the radius that we had in, um, in fillet command. Here instead we have distance, okay? So I'm going to show you what is distance. So CHA enter, D enter and you see the distance is zero. That's why when I use chamfer, it kind of created for me a, a sharp corner. Let's change it to one inch. Now, again, one inch. And that's it, you see? So the distance that kind of, I kind of specified is the distance between this um, kind of corner and this point, okay? So the extent of these two edges over here where and where they intersect, the space between this place and here is the distance, right? So as you saw, I entered, I have entered two different distances or maybe they could be the same, okay? So I've entered one inch for both and that kind of specifies the distance from here and here. So I could enter two different distances. So um, CHA enter, select first line. No, I wanna change the distance actually. So D enter. So I want one of them to be one inch. So one inch and the second one, two inches or maybe three. This is the difference. So the distance from here is one inch, but from this side is three inch. Now you either have the option to use the chamfer, actually to change the chamfer distance or use chamfer angle, chain chamfer angle. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how that works. So for example, imagine that you want the chamfered edge to be, to have an specific angle with this first line. Okay, for example, we want it to have um, a, maybe a 45, no, this time, maybe a 30 degree angle with this line over here. Okay, so let's um, do it. So CHA enter, and this time uh, you see the angle, I should enter A, so A enter. And now it is saying, you see the command line, a specified chamfer length on the first line. So what chamfer length I'm looking for over here for the first line. So I want it to be, for example, three inches, maybe. And a specified chamfer angle from the first line. So what angle I'm looking for, for here. So I want it to be 30 degree. Now it is saying uh, select the first line, select second line, and that's it. You see, so we have a 30 degree um, angle over here. And also three inch distance from this corner, okay? Now let's do a quick exercise. 
Well, I want you to draw a 45 angled um, beveled edge that begins one inch from the corner. Okay, so you can pause the video, just draw these two lines. Then pause the video and do it. So again, a 45 degree beveled edge that begins one inch from this corner. Okay, now let's see how we can do that. Okay, so again, CHA, enter. Now we want a 45 degree, right? So you can either enter an angle or if, uh, if we set the distance one inch from here and again one inch from here, automatically the angle would be 45, right? Or if it was two inch from here, two inch and, and two inch from this side, then again, the angle would be 45. But let's do it with the angle this time. So A enter, specify chamfer length on the first line. So we want one inch distance and the chamfer angle 45. Select first line and select second line, and that's it. Now let's hit Control Z or undo to uh, do it this time. Let's do it this time with the distance only. Okay, so CHA, D, enter, one, one and select first one and second one. And you see the result is the same because of the 45 degree angle. Now let's talk about some of the commands that allow us to kind of manipulate the existing object, objects in our drawing. Well, some of these commands are move, copy, mirror, array, and rotate, okay? So it's important to know that all of these commands are two part commands. Okay. So for the per first parts, AutoCAD asks you to select the objects. And in the second part, for example, for the move command, it, uh, it actually asks for a second um, pick or second point to locate, to locate the object. And the icons for these commands are located over here in the modify panel. So you see rotate mirror, copy, move, and we also have array over here. Now let's start uh, first with the move command. Okay, so the shortcut for the move command is M, enter, okay, M. So let's do it, M, enter. Now it asks you, as I've told you, it asks you to select the object. So for example, I'm gonna pick this line and then after selecting the object, you need to hit enter. And now uh, it asks you to specify base point. So I'm gonna pick, for example, this end point of the line, okay? And then you need to place it somewhere else. So it is asking to specify second point. So I'm gonna place it, for example, at the end of um, this line over, sorry, this line over here, okay? So the end point, to this end point and that's it. Now let's draw these two lines. <clears throat> now I wanna move this circle and place it, place the center of this circle over the intersection of these two lines, okay? So um, enter, select the object, hit enter, and then you need to come here over the edge so uh, kind of the o OS snap allows you to see the center of the circle. Okay. Pick the center and just place it in the, on the intersection of these two lines. Another option that you have here is to first select the object and then run the command. Okay. So for example, I, I want to move all of these objects. Okay. So I'm going to select them. And then I'm going to enter M, hit M, enter. Okay. Now, uh, I have only the second part of the command. Okay. So because um, before entering the command, I have selected my object. So I just need to pick uh, somewhere on the object, for example, here or somewhere else, and then place it somewhere else. Okay. So 
<coughs> in this way, we had only the second part of the command. And there is no difference between these two conditions, okay? The next command is copy, okay? And the shortcut to this command is a CO. Okay, so for example, I want to create copies of this circle. So I wanna, um, I'm gonna hit CO, enter, and then again, select object. So I'm gonna pick the circle and then hit enter. Now I specify base point. I'm gonna pick the center of the circle, okay? And now I can create multiple copies um, of the object, okay? So if you want to get out of the command, you should press the enter. Now I want you to do this little exercise, okay? So let's draw these two. intersected lines. Now I'm going to move this. And I want to create, actually, I want you to create one copy of this circle over here. Okay. So the center of the circle should be located on the intersection over here. So pause and pause the video and do it. Now let's see how you can do that. Okay. So you can Hit C O enter, pick the object, again hit enter, select the center point, and then just create one copy. And because we don't want any other more copies, just hit enter and you are kind of out of the command. The next command that I'm going to talk about is rotate. Okay, so let's draw a rectangle over here. Now I want to rotate this rectangle uh, the, in a way that it kind of be located like this, horizontal instead of vertical. Okay, so the shortcut to the rotate command is RO and the icon is located here, okay? So I'm gonna enter RO, enter, and then you, you need to select the object hit enter, and then I need to specify the base point, right? So I'm gonna pick the base point. You can um, select whatever point that you want, okay? So the point that you pick is important because the object you see will be rotated based on that base point, okay? Will be rotated around that point. Now I'm gonna, you can either place it like this and select any point on the screen or let's hit Z enter. Or if you want it to be rotated based on a specific angle, you can insert that specific angle. Angle. Okay, so R O enter, select the object, specify the base point. And then for example, I'm gonna hit 90 degree, okay? so. You see, it is saying specify rotation angle. So I'm gonna enter 90 and then that's it. Now let's draw two lines like this. And I'm gonna place a circle over here. Okay. Now I want to rotate this circle and place it somewhere on uh, this line, okay? So because I don't know the uh, value of this angle, I'm gonna use the reference option in the rotate command this time, okay? So RO enter, select the object, hit enter, specify base point, okay? And you see when I, when I don't know the exact angle, it's kind of hard for me to place the circle on this line, okay? And then because I cannot specify the rotation angle, I'm gonna use this option over here, R reference, R enter, okay? And then it asks me to specify the reference angle or I can pick, for example, instead of entering a value, I can pick this, a point, the center of this angle, and then come here and pick, for example, here, 
or somewhere on the line, it doesn't matter actually. And then place it over here, you see? We didn't know the angle, but we could kind of rotate it based on this specific angle. That may come handy sometimes, but usually what we use is to just pick the object R O enter, and then that, uh, after specifying the base point, you just need to hit an angle and that's it, or pick somewhere on the screen, okay? The next command that I'm going to talk about is mirror command, okay? And the shortcut to this command is MI, and the icon is located over here. Okay, so mi enter, you need to select objects, so pick the objects that you want to be mirrored, and then hit enter. And then uh, you see it's saying a specify first point of mirror line. So when you want to use the mirror tool, or um, yes, the mirror command, you need to specify a mirror line that tells AutoCAD, I want my object to be rotated to be mirrored based on that line. Okay, so I'm going to uh, draw a kind of uh, a line over here, not an actual line, just I need to specify two points. Okay, so I'm going to pick the second point and you see this uh, message pops up. Do you want to erase source object? So the initial object is source object, right? So the first object that I had. Uh, AutoCAD is asking me if I want to keep it or I want uh, the source object to be deleted. Okay, so by default, the no option is uh, active. I'm going to hit enter. So I wanted to keep the original shape, the original object. Now you see we have a, mirror, a mirrored object over here. Now let's delete this. This time, so this time I'm going to draw a line over here. Okay. It doesn't matter the length, uh, the length doesn't, doesn't matter. So I'm going to draw a line over here and then I'm going to hit M I enter, select the object, hit enter again. And then I need to specify first point of mirror line and then second point of mirror line. Right. And again, it's the same. So you could either draw the mirror line or you could specify just two points uh, that act as a mirror line, okay? Now, if you don't want to draw a mirror line and use the mirror tool, it's important for you to um, make sure that polar tracking icon here is on, okay? Make sure to turn it on and then, because let's see what happens if this polar tracking is off. So I'm going to select the object, MI enter, and then I need to specify two lines, uh, two points for the mirror lines, right? For the mirror line. I'm going to pick the first point. And for the second point, you see, because I'm not able to um, actually draw a straight line, that makes me to have error in rotating my object, okay? So that's the problem. But if I turn this on, then I would be able to um, draw a straight line. So polar tracking, MI enter. Now this time, instead of picking some, um, actually drawing the mirror line somewhere around here that has a uh, kind of space that there is a, a space between the end point of this object and the line, I'm going to pick just the end point. So the mirrored object will be kind of just attached to the initial object I have. So I'm going to pick this point and then draw the line and hit no. And you see, there is no distance between these two objects. And that's because the mirrored line was kind of uh, right attached to the source object. There is no uh, distance between the mirror line and the initial object. Now let's this time use the yes button. Okay, am I enter? I'm gonna pick, for example, this or somewhere around here. 
and this time I'm going to hit yes. I'm going to select yes and you see the source object was deleted. So one more time, select the object, M, I, enter. And then this time, instead of uh, selecting the yes or no by keyboard, you can just hit, for example, you can just type in Y or N for yes or no. So I'm going to say Y, I'm going to write Y and then hit enter. That means yes. Now imagine that I want to create copies, multiple copies of this circle, but at the same time that I'm creating the copies, I want them to be rotated. Okay. Now to do this, actually we use a command which is called array. So array command allows you to kind of create copies while rotating or moving an object. Now let's see how array uh, command works. Okay, so the icon is located here and as you can see it's a fly fly out button and you open it you can see the other uh, array options that we have. So we have overall three types of array, a rectangular ar array, pol uh, polar array and path array and we'll talk about only rectangular and polar array in this chapter. Okay, so you can either pick the icons or come here and the shortcut to this command is AR and hit enter and let's first uh, move this circle for example over here and then AR enter select so you need to first select the object that you want to create arrays of hit enter and then here uh, Actually, AutoCAD wants you to specify, do you want to do a rectangular array, path array, or a polar array? So you need to specify which type of array you want to use. So for example, this time I'm going to use a rectangular array. So R, enter. And then you see this automatically actually uh, created multiple copies uh, for me. So rectangular array creates multiple copies of the original object for you in uh, a number of rows and columns. Okay. And now you see it is saying select grip to edit array or just exit. Okay. So if you want to edit the number of rows or the number of columns, the space between the, uh, them and something, like that you can just pick these arrows over here and edit them and then exit the command let's do some adjustments okay first so if i select this uh, arrow over here this first one you see i'm able to kind of adjust the spacing between the columns now pick some point and then if i pick this arrow over here the same happens, but this time for the color, uh, for the rows, I can adjust the space between the rows. And if I pick this arrow over here, I can kind of create more columns or less columns and adjust the number of columns. The same is for this arrow over here, but about the row, uh, rows, so you can increase the number of rows. And this column acts uh, kind of like these two, but together. So if I pick the rectangular um, grip, I can, at the same time, I can either uh, increase the number of columns or the number of rows and then place, place it somewhere, okay? And then if I want to, if I'm done, uh, doing the adjustment, you just need to hit enter and you will get out of the command. Now, the important part is that if I select this, you see all of these will be selected and this actually acts, the uh, array that has been created acts as one single object, right? So these are not separate, uh, separated circles anymore. And you see when even I have get got out of the command and um, when I select the object, I st I'm still able to see these arrows and uh, the grips, right? 
So I'm still able to do adjustments to the array I created. And you see when I select the array object, this, uh, uh, this kind of um, menu pops up, which is array creation tab, okay? Now, you see we have different options over here, column, uh, number of columns, number of rows, the um, space between the rows, the total space of the, um, um, of the rows, okay? Or the same is for columns. So if I want to adjust the array, I can do it from this tab, this array creation tab. For example, I want to reduce the number of columns to six and increase the number of, uh, or reduce the number of rows to four, for example. See, so I'm still able to do some adjustments. And if I want to increase the um, space between the rows, for example, I'm, I'm gonna, this is, to about two inch right now. So I'm going to increase it to four inch. And you see the difference. Or I can increase, actually I can ch change the total space from this first object and the last object on the rows. I can change the total from here. So I'm going to, for example, this is one feet right now. I'm going to say, let's say two feet. You see, it has been increased. And as I change the total space, for example, one feet, uh, you, you will see that the between space, the uh, rows between a space will change automatically. So if I change it to one feet, it changes from eight inches to four inches, right? The same is for the number of columns and the space between those. So now you know that there are two ways to control and make changes to arrays, right? One with using the grips and the other using the array creation tab. And at the end, when you are done uh, doing the adjustment, you can either hit escape key on the keyboard or just use this button close array. So now you should know that uh, when you want to have precise, kind of precise changes, uh, you need to use this tab, right? Array creation tab, because using the grips actually we're not, it's not actually that easy to um, create precise changes, right? Now let's hit control Z and get back to the first circle. Okay. Now imagine that I want to create, for example, a hundred copies of this circle in columns and for example, 15 rows, right? So that's a huge number, right? So actually doing it the same way we did it before is kind of insane because uh, imagine that A, R, enter, select the object, um, or enter and now I need to pick this and kind of count one by one what each column one by one so 20 22 20 and until I get to the number that I want for example of 100 right so it's going to be difficult so instead of doing this let's see what we can do to make it easier so you need to a R Hit enter, select object, hit enter, or enter. And this time, you see we have another option over here, which is count and, uh, and another, which is a spacing. Okay, so we are going to use these two options this time. So for count, I need to insert C O U. So I'm going to type in C O U, enter. And then you see it's kind of uh, prompt, uh, prompt me to enter the number of columns. So I just need to, for example, insert 100. And then I need to specify the number of rows, so 50. And that's it, right? You see, I have a lot of copies. And that's actually the um, logical way to do it. Now, if I want to adjust the spacing between these copies, 
uh, we can use the spacing option over here. So S, enter, and then it asks me to specify the distance between columns. So um, I'm going to increase it to, for example, three inch, and then hit enter and I specify the distance between rows. So two inches and that's it, right? And if I hit enter again, I'm out of the command. Now let's zoom in and check the distance between these two circles, for example, the I enter. So the center of this circle to, uh, to the center of this circle, you see the space between the center of these two objects is three inch. Now let's do a quick exercise. Okay. So I want you to draw a six by six pattern of one inch squares that are one and one eighth of an inch apart. Okay. So pause the video and do that. Now let's do it together. So first let's create the rectangle or you see the inter one inch by one inch. And then pick the second point. Okay, that's it. Now we need to create array, right? So A or enter, we want a rectangular array, select object, hit enter, we want a rectangular array or enter. And then we need to increase the number, right? So let's hit enter and get out of the command and then edit it from here. This um, kind of uh, this, what we call it, this tab, actually, array tab. So I'm going to increase the column number to six we want, uh, because we want a six by six pattern in the rows to six. And we wanted the space between them to be one and a, actually one and one eighth of an inch. And the same is for here. So I'm going to copy this. And that's it, right? Hit escape. And that's it. Okay, now let's get to the next command, which is polar array. Okay, so we use the same kind of shortcut. So a, let's first draw a line over here, for example. Okay. Now I want to, with a polar array, I can actually create multiple copies of the original object rotated about a point on the screen. Okay. So I want to create copies of this object rotated around this point. Okay. So I'm going to use polar array this time. So A R enter, select the object hit enter and this time I'm going to pick polar. So for polar, as you see, I need to insert PO, right? So PO enter. And then you need to specify the center point of array. So I'm going to pick this and you see, uh, it has automatically created, um, an array for me. Now I have the option to edit this array right at here. Okay. So for example, if I pick this just normal a square at the middle, um, you see, I can place it somewhere else, right? Or if I pick this, um, uh, triangular kind of grip, I can actually, um, change the angle between these items, right? So I can reduce the angle. And you see when I change, uh, when I use this first grip, first uh, triangular grip, this second one shows up, right? So using this second triangular grip, I can kind of increase the number of items that I have or decrease those, right? So I can change the count of the items. And also using this other grip, I can 
uh, this uh, rectangular grip, which is kind of rot rotated, I can uh, stretch the radial distance from the base point, you see? So these are the adjustments you can do to uh, a polar array. Now hit either enter or escape to get out of the command. And this is what I've created using polar array. Again, if you click and select it, it kind of pick, um, gets you to this uh, array tab. Uh, and you have the option to make adjustments from here as well. So the number of items you have, so I'm going to pick, for example, instead of tw uh, 12, I'm going to insert 16. So you see it has changed it automatic, changes uh, automatically. And I also can um, actually increase the number of rounded rows from here. So I can increase it to three. And you see what happens. So I'm going to change it to one again. And that's it. Now let's hit undo. Okay. A, R, enter, select object, hit enter, polar, enter, specify center point. And this time, um, like just similar to the rectangular um, array, uh, we can control the array from here, right? So I want to change the number of items. So I enter, I'm going to increase it to, or decrease it to four, and then Let's increase it to eight, for example. I enter, eight, enter. And then I'm gonna change the angle, right? So A, enter, and I'm gonna decrease it to 20 instead of 45. See? Okay, so this is what I wanted to cover for chapter five. Actually, you need to do a lot of exercises to get used to using these commands, okay? And that's it. Good luck and have a good one.